Good day to you. I'm going to wait to that. I agree, sir. That is so. <laughs> it's pitiful what we have going on here. Good day to you. It's good to be here today. I'm going to look at a, a subject that uh, about some men that I think is interesting. I've been studying this the last few days and uh, thinking about uh, you know what to, sp to talk on and speak on and uh, and never studied it a great deal. But I'm I'm going to look at the uh, the twelve spies that was sent out by God into the promised land. And as I studied this, I, I found out some something about it that I did not, uh, that I did not realize. And that is, this lesson is going to be about leadership. This is a lesson about leadership. A congregation, a generation of, of God's people so oftentimes, what happened to it is a direct response to the leadership that's in charge. And I think I hear amen. Amen. <laughs> I knew that it would be some amen, because that is the truth. The, when, I, when I look at this, and we are going to look at, at chapter 13 of the book of Numbers. Chapter 13, the, the book of Numbers. This is coming about after two years of after the crossing of the Red Sea. This is coming about after the people came across the Red Sea and they had, they had been eating there, they had been eating the manna, received the Ten Commandments, they'd been eating the manna that, from heaven. Uh, this is after they had complained, saying, all we eating is this bread. You know, they, they complained and said, well, I'm gonna give you meat. And the people came when, when God told through Moses, we, we, you're going to get meat. They came to him and said, how is that possible to be that when you got these thousands and they gave the hundreds of thousands of people that was there. And they said, how is that possible? Well, guess what? The Lord blew up in both sides of the camps. One day out, the quail blew in was thick to the point that they, from the inches, some have said it was about a foot to 18 inches thick for a, for a day's walk either side. And the people, what did they do? They had the meat. And then, of course, they took it in and they just uh, killed and killed and stacked and stacked to the point that God was unhappy with them because they was basically putting it to the point that it was a waste. This happened. But of course, he kept feeding them. And then they came up after two years to the promised land. There across from them, they was able to look at it. And then we come to the story here in 13. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. And by the way, I used to think for some reason, I didn't read this right in my mind. Let's read it again. I want to read you the way that I've always thought because it says which he said to the land of Canaan, which I may give to the children of Israel. It didn't say I may. He said what? He said I am giving. It was already in the possession. It was already in the contract. He was giving it to them. Isn't that right? That's what it said. It says I am giving. To the children of Israel from from each tribe he said I want you from each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man everyone a young recruit among them no didn't say that either I used to think that's what was sent for a young scout but let's look and see who they sent who did God tell them who did he say he says it said each tribe of your fathers you shall send forth a man, every one a leader among them. What? He did not send out the young boys or the young men. He didn't send out the young. He sent out whom? He sent out the leaders. Not the men that thought they was leaders, but the men that was leaders. 
What we have in this story, I'm telling you right now, is the same trouble we have in the Lord's church this generation, and so oftentimes in almost every generation. We have poor performance of God's people because we have poor leaders. <laughs> These men was leaders, but they was leaders in a worldly sense instead of a spiritual sense. They did not recognize or believe in the power of God. I'm giving you the end of the lesson instead of the lesson. Let's go on if we could. It says, everyone a leader. So Moses sent them from, from the wilderness of Pam according to the commandments of the Lord. All of them, men who was heads of the children of Israel. Again, he's, he's making a statement. Who did he send? Leaders. Who was the head of the what? The heads of the children of Israel. Now these was them that were sent. And I won't read all of this, but it gives you the tribes, the 12 tribes and the name of all those that were sent. There was the leader from each tribe was sent forth. And notice this. And it says, and these, verse 16, these are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses did this. What did he, he did this. They said, then Moses said, uh, sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, go up this way to the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. It said, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or, or weak, few or many. Whatever the land, wherever the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether it is the cities that they inhabit or the camps or are they uh, strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, whether there are forests or there are not, be of good, he told them, he said, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now, why should they be of good courage? Have courage. Now, this was only two years away, brother, am I right? Two years away from the time they had seen the Lord defeat the whole army of the Egyptians. Wow. They had seen God defeat the Egyptian army. They had saw the sea open up. They had saw the presence of God on the mountain and received and saw the fire and all it. They had seen this. They had seen, the un, they had seen those that rebelled basically gobbled up in the world. They had seen all this. They had been able to go out and pick six, six mornings. They could go out and pick the food for them to eat. And on that last morning, they could pick for two days. They had seen the quail come in. And he told them, he told them what? He said, be of good courage. Looked like they had already had a lot of, a lot of proof, would you say, of what God could do? But don't worry. They had the proof that they was the leaders. So don't worry about them. They was the leaders, right? Let's see what happened. It says, so they went up. Look in, in verse 31. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Sin and as far as Bahab and near the entrance. And they went all the way. And they went through the land. They went through all this. In verse 23, it says, and they came to the valley of Eshan and there cut down a, a branch with one cluster of grapes. They cut down one cluster of grapes. Uh, I have seen grapes grow. Beautiful, aren't they? To see grapes, a gra I've, I've had a, grapes, I've cut off a piece of a vine and it was probably like that and it was, well, I had no trouble holding one hand. Good grapes, big grapes. But look at this, they cut down a grape and it says they cut down one vine and they put it on a pole and it took two men to carry it. Now that's, that's abundance. That's an abundance of grapes. And this was just the first harvest. 
This was the time they said they went out, the time of the first harvest of the first grapes. So this is what happened to them. It is, this happened. It says now in verse 26. Now they departed and came back to Moses and, and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Pan. Notice, and they brought back word to them, to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. Man, look what the Lord's going to give us. Look at the size of this grape. Look at this grape. One, two men to carry it. Look, this is what the fruit of the land is like. Don't you know the people was happy to see that? They was until the leaders started talking to them. Until the leaders started talking to them. Because then they told, so then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us, talking to Moses. We went to that land. It says, and, and truly it flourished like milk and honey. And this is the fruit. Now this is what they all said. They came in and said, it's like milk. It's like, you know, milk and honey over there. Look at the fruit thereof. They didn't play down what was there. They played it up. Look at the, it's like milk and honey there. It says, but needlessly, the people who dwell in the land are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants and they saw the descendants of the giants and the other people and they looked and they said, and so they said, yes, it's there, but the people are so strong. I still don't understand that. Because of that day, they knew that the strongest and the safest country in the world was Egypt. It was. Even the sea people that came later and came in and conquered, we know the people. Did you know they was not, Egypt was not conquered by them? It wasn't to the time of Alexander that Egypt was conquered, basically. It was the strongest, but still yet, God had allowed them to escape and defeated the strongest state, but they was afraid of a bunch of little city-states. Not kingdoms, but a different tribe. They mentioned six, seven different people, individuals, not a whole army. And there they was, hundreds of thousands of fighting men, and they was afraid. They was afraid. As a matter of fact, in verse 30 it says, then Caleb, one of the two we're going to like, I would say one of the two good leaders, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. He, he, they was, hey, we are well able. This is what he said here in verse 30. The cable, he said, hey, we are well able. It says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. I like that. For they are stronger than what? We. A little we. <laughs> little we. I say we because... What Caleb believed and what they should have done is they did not defeat Pharaoh's army. Who did? God, right? God did. They did not give God any credit for anything that had happened. God had gave them water. God had defeated it. God had, had opened up the Red Sea. But then they still looked and said, what? We can't do it. We can't do a lot of things. We can't, brethren, we can't save a soul. But we can bring a soul and take a soul to Jesus. Can we not? We can take them to the gospel. We don't do it. God is what does it. And we have to act for God. We need leaders today and people today that's doing God's will and what God wants done instead of what they can do. Our power is not in 
our hands. The power is in God's hands. Amen. That's what this young one, this one young man, this leader Caleb thought. He said this, and they says, and they are the, uh, and it said, the land through which we was gone as spies is a land that, they notice, this is in verse 32. It is a land that devours its inhabitants. Wait a minute. You talk about an oxymoron. They tell how good and how strong the people are. Then in the next sentence, they said the land is, is killing the people. They're not even getting the story straight. How can the land be so good, the people are so strong, and the land is killing the people? That don't make a lick of sense. See, they are arguing anything they can, just any negatives, without making any sense of it. We can't do that. We can't do that. I, I've heard people say, well, it's no, we, we can't go out and invite people to come to church. They won't come. How do you know? Well, we just know it. Have, how many have you invited? What? No use inviting, they won't listen. Well, what, what do they have to listen to if you don't invite them? We need to realize we are to do God's will, God's will, God's will, and God's way, and God's word is what? Is what changes and reaches people. Get the job done. Here, it goes on. It says, these are giants. It says, we are like grasshoppers in our, in, in our, <laughs> oh, this is, this is almost funny. Look at the last verse here in chapter 13. It says, and they it said, they came from the giants and says, we was like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we was in their sight. We are like grasshopper in our what? Own sight. They saw themselves as being what? Small. They saw themselves as being small. If they saw themselves as God's people that being small, they was basically seeing God as too small. Amen. But this is not the end of this story. Chapter 14, it goes on. It says, the people said this, something that they live or die to regret saying, if that makes sense. Look at chapter 14. It says, So all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And some, no, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. They looked and said, if only we had died in the wilderness, we wouldn't be disappointed. They basically, they, they said, oh, if we only died in Egypt, oh, oh, if, basically he was saying, oh, if Pharaoh had only killed us, or, oh, if we had died in the wilderness, we wouldn't be humidified, or not humidified, but what am I trying to say? Not to you, made, made light, put down. They would, they would just be dead then basically made to be regret. That's what they said. If only we would have died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not have been better for us to return to Egypt? And we see what happened there. They tried then we're going to tell you the story. They tried to, to get somebody else. They said, hey, let us select the new leaders. Let us get somebody else. Let us go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back to Egypt. You know what they wanted to do? They wanted to go back to sin. As a, as a gospel preacher, probably the hardest thing that hits my heart and I even looked on Facebook, I showed, came up some people over the past, over the past 10 years, I have pictures of people that have been baptized. And I almost cried this week, I had tears in my eyes, because some of them came on that I had baptized. If 
but because of sin in their life and everything else, I don't see them anymore. They don't even come anymore. They don't answer the phone anymore. Why? Because they have went back into the wilderness. They have went back into the wilderness, went back into Egypt went back away from God and God's word and God's way. Why did they do it? The devil tempted them. People tempted them. And yes, yes, like the Egyptians, sometimes we are tempted by our own, listen to me, by our own memories, are we not? thinking how much more fun. I've had people when I was converted, went back to Oklahoma home and a lot of my friends and family, they, they thought I was just putting on a front. They couldn't believe I wasn't gonna go and carouse and drink with them like I had before. Was I tempted to? Be honest with you, yes. I was tempted because it was my family. It was my past. It was the way I was brought up. It was my Egypt. <laughs> Does that make sense? It was my Egypt. But I, uh, you know, it, it's there. We have to be those. We find out that what happened, and I'm going to, just out of time, I want you to read the rest of this, but I can tell you something about it. The two men stood up, and the Lord came, and the Lord struck down those. Struck them down. Matter of fact, he ended up ending this with the statement that it said. It says in verse 30, or in, in uh, 14, it says, 14 and 28. So say to them, he told the Israelites, he told Moses, So say to them, as I live, saith the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so well, so I will do to you. What now? What did they spoke? He's talking about they said it'd been better for us to die in the wilderness. So you know what he said? Okay. You get your request. <laughs> I had never seen this. They said it. He said, okay, you get your request. They went and they didn't go in, all but the two. Everybody else that was 20 years of age and above did not see the promised land. Why? Because they, as an adult, had turned their back on God, forgot what he had done, and didn't believe in what he could do. Have you forgot what God has done for you? Through the blood of Christ, you can repent of your sins, you can be baptized into Christ, but after that, you gotta walk in newness of life. Somebody said, what do you mean? You gotta walk towards the promised land. And we're not talking about a land here on earth. But we are talking about that place. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, what? You may be also. Amen. Don't turn back to Egypt. Don't forget. And yea, leaders, try to lead people where God wants them to go, not where you think you can go, but let us have faith to see that God will allow us to go where he wants us to and where he makes it possible. As the old saying is, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which what? Strengthen of me. God be with you till we meet again.